today we're going to do a full service on the RTV. We're also going to add a camera because it's very hard to see directly behind these things with the little lime spreader we've got. So we're going to add that to it, but we're going to do a full service on it. We're in my shed. I've got my gantry crane in here. I've got the heat kicking. Not exactly the cleanest shed in the world. I've got a tarp on the floor because I have dirt floors and I don't really want to get that nasty today. So we're going to jump into it. We'll start servicing the machine. Um, we're going to do engine oil, engine oil filter, hydraulics, hydraulic oil filter, transmission, transmission oil filter, all that good stuff. All right, so there's not a lot of room in here. My building isn't very big. I'm going to go ahead and hoist this thing up. There, now we should have enough room to get up under there, get to the skid plates and all that stuff that have to come off in order to be able to service this thing the right way. Okay, so we're under the RTV now, and we don't necessarily have to take these front skid plates off right here, but we're going to. Um, as you can see, there's a whole lot of hay in here. Well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but see, I'm pulling hay out. So we're gonna pull this pan down and we'll pull the next pan down. Um, the next pan is actually where everything's at, really, is back there, because that's where the engine and the transmission, everything is, is all the way in the back. Well, we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. So I'll get my tools together. We'll pull these off. They're just 12 millimeters, if I remember right. They're all 12s. There's three here, one there, three there, and three there. We'll pull all that stuff off and then we'll start working on that. All right, so we're going to start by taking off this back pan, which is actually where all the oil and everything is. Uh, like I said, we are going to take off this pan because it's full of hay and we'll clean that out. But I need to start right here. Um, kind of a pain. front one kind of started right here so the whole pan doesn't drop on our face take this one out right here a little bit more in there all right now we're gonna roll to the back back one doesn't come off. Right, we're gonna set these kind of out my way right over here. Oh nice set them in the mud. Alright so then we're gonna take this one off. Put that up with my hand. Again there's a bunch of hay and stuff in here so I'm probably gonna have to spray my tarp off. Alright and then if you're watching I know the light's bad under here. I need to figure out how to get some light under here, but all right. So now we've got this right here is the old drain pan for the engine. So once we get our, uh, and the engine only holds about a gallon. Um, so it shouldn't be much of an issue to drain it with um, the RTV down. So we'll set it down when we, after we actually start draining it, kind of let it come out. Um, the back one's going to be a little bit harder because that's more fluid and actually there's a there's another drain right here right here I don't know right here that is for the hydraulic tank the main hydraulics so we'll pull that out we're going to drain that as well hopefully I can get a five gallon bucket under it because it fits a lot more fluid but now we're going to pull this front one off. There's two reasons. A bunch of hay and we're going to have to run some wires anyway. And we start doing that camera. Uh, 
Yep, yep, here comes all the dirt. Yep, 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 yep. here it comes. And we're gonna stop the video here. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so what happens when you do a hay farm, guys. You get lots and lots of hay in your face. We'll clean this out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's gross. Get that cleaned out, spray off our mat so we're not rolling in it. And then uh, we'll come back and actually, oh wow, come back and actually do the service. That's gross. Oh, we got cobwebs and stuff too. But yeah, we'll have to run another power wire back here or something for, so that'll help us with that off as well. Get all this grass out of here. Look at that. Mmm, yum. And just think, we still have to get the transmission pole out. All right. So the plates are off. Wow. That's a lot worse than I thought it was. We still got. <laughs> that's a, that's actually pretty cool. Somehow it went through the bottom pan and like skewered another hole. Anyway. All right, so hopefully we got some better light in there. I'm taking my blower right now that I've made. It's just got some holes in the end of a Harbor Freight blower. Just kind of pinch off the end and keep going. We're gonna blow this sucker out before we do this service. All right, so we've kind of blown this thing out. I'm holding the camera right now because I want want to show something. This is this is the radiator right here, and if you can see, especially right there, it's hard for me to tell where I'm looking at. So, especially right there, this radiator is very very stopped up. This is bad. We need to blow that out real good. We'll do it from the top. Um, but that needs to be done. We'll have to pull out the seat and all that stuff. And we'll blow that out real good. We could do it from down here, but I don't want to do that in my face. But we need to blow that out really, really well. These Kubota engines don't like to be hot. Um, so we will we'll blow that out real good. But there's our oil filter right there. Um, and uh, we're getting ready to drain the oil right now. So we'll get our oil pan under here. And we will pull that plug right there, right there, and we'll start draining it. And then we'll pull our filter right there and change it. And that should be it. All right. Let's see. That's what I thought. That is a 14 millimeter on old drain plug, I'm pretty sure. Yep. It's a little tight, so give me some more leverage here, and there we go. Make sure my drain pan is open. It's a little dirty on my drain pan, but it's all right. Ain't that gonna hurt nothing. Put my other pan down here because I really don't want to get my tarp all covered in oil. All right. Now I don't have the oil cap off on the top. So it shouldn't actually start draining really fast.
See, that's not gonna drain real fast right there. So now we gotta go up top and pull the cap. And it should come flowing out. There she goes. Definitely time for an oil change. Now, we're gonna let that drain down. I'm actually gonna lower the RTV most of the way to make sure that that drains all the way. All right, so it's finished draining. We're gonna go ahead and put the drain plug back on. I've actually already got it back on. I just need to tighten it. So, usually helps if you grab the right wrench. Sorry about that, my arm in the way. I'll tighten it up a little bit, don't go overboard. It's just an old drain plug. All right, so there's that. Now, I'm gonna lift the vehicle back up, I think. Well, maybe not. If I can get this, Old filter with my hand, I'm not going to lift the vehicle back up to get it. If I can't, then, uh, well, then I'll lift the vehicle back up. Alright, old filter's right up here. It's in a great spot, as everything is on these things. Alright, well that wasn't too bad. Here comes the oil. I run all over everything. Kind of let that drain down. Of course, it's hitting this cable. It's actually, a transmission cable. Come on. You know, the next problem <laughs> is getting the old filter out of here. Because, I mean, that's that's a brake line right there. I have to go this way. Come on out of there. Lord, they don't make the threads long enough, I don't think. Okay. Ah. And there's a little bitty oil filter. Isn't it cute? Set that right there and let it drain. Let my rag. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. Keep it from dripping on me. Alright, there's that. Now we gotta put the oil filter back on. Fill it back up with oil. And the oil change will be done. Alright, so as usual, I put a little bit of oil on this O-ring on the new filter. Just a little bit, not, not tons. Enough to keep it from sticking. There's actually an easier way to get to this filter, I think. And it's from the side, which you won't be able to see if I do it, but we'll just put it in here this way. Up in there, where's my center? Well, that didn't work. Unfortunately, I'm using my left hand and it doesn't work very well. <sighs> there it goes.
old filter back on. Again, the threads are a mile and a half long. So that's on. Now we're going to fill it up with some oil. We'll go up top, put some oil in it, and uh, then we'll jump on over to, I believe, the transmission, the HST oil and filter. All right. So this thing takes almost, almost a gallon of oil. My funnel's a little bit tall, but it's what I've got. So we're just going to. Start pouring. You know, it was a little cold from sitting outside all night long, so it's taking a little bit to go down the pipe. It's about half of that. We have actually like 3.7 ports. That run there. Got a dipper stick. Clean it off. I always have to do for change. That's pretty gross. Don't jump in there. Let's have a look at it. We are in between first stop. Second stop. Clean some more. That drain in there. right at the top dot. Now if we turn it over for a second, it's going to fill up our oil filter and I'll shut it right back off. Top it off. Yeah. That ain't bad. I'm going to take this out of here. There. I'm just gonna kind of set this on heel. Now, really kind of need to wipe that off, but out and away. I'm get a new rag. Gross. We're gonna turn over the engine. I'm just gonna stick that on there. Let it fill up the oil filter. That should have been enough. Check our oil level. Mix up the nasty oil with the good oil. All right, so it's hard to see. And one thing I will go back on, it's hard to see, I don't have my flashlight in my hand, but both of those filters for the hydraulic system are down in there. We're up under the bed right now. They're down in there, um, and actually the easiest way to get to them is to remove the back plate back there. Uh, so that's where those are, but first we gotta drain the fluid. Um, so I'll show you guys that in just a minute. All right, so because we have to get to the filters, we have to lower the bed. So we're going to lower this right here and we're going to get to the back. To get to the filters, we have to take off this rear plate right here to actually get to them really good. Alright, so we're going to pull this little cover off and I've got some electrical stuff to it so I might actually have to cut some zip ties. I'm going to pull this off real quick here because it makes it a little bit easier to get to the filters. Let's see, 
I've got some wires chilling right there, but that should be enough. Just pull that down just a little bit, let it hang. Okay, so now we're down here and I'm kind of going to block my own light. If you look, use the end of my socket. See this shape right here? I know it's hard to see. This one actually kind of looks like an oil drop. And somebody at Kubota was kind of, I guess they were kind of thinking about this. Anyway, this, this shape looks like an oil drop. And that is a drain for your transmission. It's, it's the one they consider the um, magnetic plug. So it's got a magnet on the plug. There is another oil drain right here on this side. So there's an oil drain there. And then there's your magnetic drain plug here. Um, you can drain it here. You're going to pull this out. There is going to be debris, metal fragments, or not fragments, metal dust kind of shavings on this plug. I don't care what you do. There's going to be metal shavings, fragments, dust, whatever you want to call it on this plug. Now, if there's a lot of it, then there's a problem. But if there's a little bit, it's kind of normal. You've got metal parts running against metal parts, steel parts, aluminum parts. It's going to have a little bit of dust, so to speak, on the magnet. It's just the way that it is. So hopefully, I think it's a 17 millimeter on that drain plug, magnet plug, whatever they want to call it. Okay. Go ahead and Try not to bust my knuckles here. Wow, that's tight. There it went. Phew. That was a little tight there. Sure I'm blocking the camera with my arm there and the light which is actually really hot on my head oh yeah that's a little grody well, that ain't good come on drain My drain pan isn't draining real well. All right, so that's probably drained enough. I'm gonna get this back in the hole if I can. Having a hard time a little bit ago. There it goes, maybe. Should have got my deep well socket. There it goes. I will say this little oil shaped hole that they drew here and cut out. It's nice. It could be bigger. Because your oil doesn't drain straight down, obviously. Yeah. Which we could have used something to fix that, but it doesn't drain straight down. So you end up with a little bit of a mess on your frame. Now I'll try to find my socket wrench. There it is. I put my jacket back on just because I went outside. I've got it nice and toasty in here right now. I don't actually need this one. Alright, so get that back on there. I don't think we're going to put it bubble tight like they did. That should be good right there. Alright, so that's back on. I'm still debating about changing the hydraulic tank fluid or not. Simply because I checked it and it's very clean. Very clean, it feels okay. It's not milky. And because that fluid's $132 for a five gallon bucket, 
Um, I may just let that one pass. All right, so I've made my decision. We're not gonna change the big hydraulic tank because it's full. Um, so we are, no, well, I say it's full. It's also clean. So we've got two different hydraulic filters here. We definitely want to change no matter what. We've got the yellow one there and we've got the white one. So if we move fast enough, when we do this, you don't lose a whole lot of fluid from the hydraulic tank that's up front. See, that's, that's actually good and oiled right there. Fresh out the package, it's got some oil on it. That's good. So we're gonna try and move fast enough and get these changed without having to lose all the fluid. We're gonna start with the back one first after I get a rag. We got a rag. A little bit of one. Stick my hand in here. See if I can. I'm right handed, so I'm gonna try and get the white one off first. Oh, there it goes. All right. Kind of a free up and swap. And it's gonna make a mess. It doesn't matter what you do, it's gonna make a damn mess. That one. I'm go back on with this one. All right. That one's on there, good and tight. Dang mess, trying to keep it off my tarp. Alright, I think this is the one that will just keep flowing. I think. That over there, and that over there. I don't have my filter wrench over here. Let's see if I can get it without. Maybe it's just in the right place. Make it difficult. Chew. This sucker's tight. It should be getting pretty good there. Almost there. Tight. All right. Here it comes. Boogity boogity. Here it goes. Boogity boogity. And we ain't worried. Sorry. Probably can't see it on YouTube. I don't see any way not to get hydraulic fluid all over the bottom of your hitch pulling these filters off. I just don't see it. I mean, you could use one of them. What are they called? I don't know. It's a flat piece of metal covered in rubber. And I'm not actually tightening it that much. It's just hard to get my hands in there. Me and my hands have been doing some funky things here recently. All right, so that's that. Now I've got to lift the bed up by hand because I don't want to start it because there's no oil in the transmission. So I've got to lift the bed up by hand and fill up the transmission because it's up under here. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> you need to let that drip and then wipe it off so it doesn't get all over my tarp. And then 
Boy, it is everywhere. I'm not gonna put this back on because I'm still trying to decide what we're gonna do as far as the um, wiring for the camera, where it's gonna go. All right, so we've got it back up here. We got both them filters changed. I'm gonna start out with my one gallon jug. That way I can pour my five gallon jug into my one gallon jug. So there's the Kubota Super UDT2 that we're gonna be using. That's what this thing takes. I've got a five gallon jug and it's one gallon jug. I said the five gallon jug is like $130 now. It's up almost $30 from last year. Clean this off real good. We got some grass right there. <laughs> hey, hey everywhere. Clean that off real good. Get this. According to the manual, it takes 1.5 gallons in the transmission here. So, should be no problem to pour this whole This whole gallon in there. I've had this fluid set it out in the sun, so it should move a little faster. Drain it, drain it. We're gonna need this funnel. All right, we're gonna go fill up our one gallon jug and we'll be right back. All right, let's just stick the dipper stick in there real quick. Only goes one way, pull it out. Look at the stick. Oh, ain't nothing there. Put it on this dirty old thing right here. Take this. Dripping all over everything. And this has, well, we'll put it down to the two. It's not quite full. on the stick Down there pick up my stick wipe it off again now again my filters are empty I am just showing on the stick 1.5 gallons my butt <laughs> I think their uh, math was a little off on that Go down. 
that's the one thing I do wish on this RTV. I wish this came up further. I wish it would open further and be much easier to work on. All right, now when we start it, you might have to add just a little bit. Now it does tell you not to go run this thing right after changing the oil. You need to operate it for a little bit to make sure that the filter and the rest of the transmission gets its oil all the way up. You need to let it run. Um, and really I need to put this seat thing back in since I'm not changing this, but I want to vacuum this out. So we're going to start it. What do we got? I think I got the e-brake on. Is it neutral? Yep, parking brake is on. Okay, so now we're gonna go for the fuel filter. Um, you can see it right here. And if you look, there's a little bit of crud down here in the bottom of the fuel bowl. Um, now there's no shut off on this one that I remember. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn it the right way and not the wrong way like I just did. So again, there's no fuel shut off for this that I know of. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but all right. So we take that out and I'm going to kind of, I don't see a lot of water or nothing in there. So that's good. All right. So we empty that out. If you look at the top of this, there are two O-rings. We need those O-rings. Don't throw away your filter until you get them O-rings out of there. Unless you buy new ones when you do it, which is probably the best idea, but I'm cheap. So you see, this one does not have O-rings. There's no O-rings in this. We're gonna put this back in my filter box so I don't get it dirty. Try not to scratch the O-ring or dent the O-ring or You're probably better off, like I said, just to order it and pick it up when you, it's a little aggravating. <laughs> Come on now. Now, well, try it the old fashioned way. That don't work. That's not what I wanted to do either. So I kind of push on it with that pick and then grab it with this pick. And there's our little bitty O-ring right there. A little bitty O-ring goes back into this filter right here. Stick it in there. Use a little pick, put it in there. I'm gonna put this one back in the box. Take my 90 degree pick, stick it in the hole. Mm. This is never my favorite part, just getting these out of here. Mm. Come on. Come on out. 
oops, I did it again. Try not to dump that on my thing. Let's, let's set my O-ring down right there. And kind of... Mm, come on. Sometimes it's easier to get a hold of these with a pair of needle nose or something. But of course I don't have a pair of needle nose on me. So we're just gonna kind of push it out. Yeah, that filter's kind of grody. And there's a little bit of gunk in there. So looks like algae actually. That's what it looks like inside there. So we're gonna go clean this fuel bowl out a little bit. And then we'll be right back and put this back together. Alright, so we've cleaned the inside of our filter up pretty good. Now we're going to stick this in here. It's actually kind of a tight fit and there are little, it matters which way it goes. There are little tabs in there or places. You just push it in there real good and make sure our O-ring's good and clean. Never want O-rings completely dry of course. I have to block the light for a second. I've got to lay down to do this. Stay in there. And just like that, it has filled up the fuel bowl again. My head probably in the way. As long as we don't got any leaks, which we'll know in a minute. Nah. So it's got a little plunger on the filter housing that allows fuel or doesn't allow fuel. So that's why as soon as I put it back on there, it just kept going, filled it up. All right, so now we're gonna check the air filter. If it needs blown out, I'm not doing it in here. Same thing with that radiator that needs blown out, I'm not doing it in here. So I'm gonna take off them two pieces right there. Put the cap off. Just kind of look at the little duck bill, make sure it's not stuck or really grody so that's not really that bad set it there and I'll set it right there let's take a look at the air filter yeah I think that can be blown out so I'm gonna go blow that out outside and then you got the center which doesn't like ever really need replaced don't don't buy the center it's just a piece of screen over a piece of plastic you can blow this out but looking at this one, it doesn't even need blowed out. So we're going to put it back in. And then we're going to go outside and we're going to blow this filter out. All right, so I put on my fancy little thing here. It's really nice. It's got holes on the side. And we're going to blow this out, hopefully. That's it for blowing that out. I'm not really sure why we lost audio here. Um, something with the GoPro wasn't working right. What I'm doing here is blowing out the radiator that's underneath the seat. You actually have to lift both seats, remove the storage bin that's underneath the seats, and then remove the other cover. Um, this is really important if they get really stopped up like this one was 
They can actually cause you to overheat, and extensive overheating on a Kubota can cause issues with the head. Um, they just they don't particularly like to be hot. Um, so it's important that you blow this one out and the one up front. Uh, you don't what you see here is not doing it any justice as far as how much I actually blew out of this thing because I'd been blowing it out before I started recording um, and then remembered so I started recording so again make sure you blow this one out uh, and blow out the one up front the one up front is generally not as bad but again it is important to blow these out Now we're going to go ahead and move to the one that's underneath the hood. Again, these ones are not really as dirty as the one underneath the seat, but it is still important to blow these out. And that's pretty much it for the RTV service. Again, this is an RTV X900, uh, and we did almost a full service. We just didn't change all the oil in the hydraulic tank. We did all the filters, um, all the fluids in the transmission, the engine, fuel filter, check the air filter, and everything seems to be good to go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.